this image uh, looks like it had been shot in Limassol, mm -hmm. but it was not. Uh, it was probably shot in Cannes, and you all recognize the man that is playing the role of the Minotaur. And uh, I used to see him very often when I was 10 or 15 going to Bagarou Beach, and uh, I was at that time very often in Vence, and Vence is in Provence, and uh, so I feel kind of familiar here. But the big difference is that in Vence at that time, uh, or around Vence, there was Matisse, and there was Chagall, and there was Max Ernst, and there was Picasso. And uh, they were all part of the, the daily life. We could see them in stores and uh, uh, playing pétanque uh, here and there. And uh, uh, so I think this was uh, a good introduction to what I was going to, to say. So my uh, presentation is very different. Uh, I'm not going to talk almost about metaphor. And I'm really going to talk about the work I present downstairs. Uh, I want to. We are lost here. Is that okay? Yeah. 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 No, what, what I want is to want to. Uh, I, I, will, I will improvise. I will improvise. Since you can, uh, we really have to get back to this presentation here. And play with the slideshow. Okay, so uh, actually I'm mostly going to talk about my work. Uh, I started to work with digital media about uh, in the early 70s and uh, for many years I've mostly been doing drawing and uh, ink on paper because that's the only thing I could do and uh, slowly I, I tried to go out of it so that's an example of what I was doing and I have doing that for I've been doing that for many years I in the beginning shown this work mostly at the CGRAPH and there was not many other place to, to show this kind of work. And uh, very rapidly, as I was developing the software I was using to create my, uh, my drawings, uh, I was under the influence of waves. Uh, waves in an arbor will actually uh, transform through the reflection of, of light on the wavelets. Uh, an object like uh, the mass of the yacht into a very interesting line. And uh, most of the geometric drawings I have been doing in the first years were based on, like everybody else, on fractals, on geometry, on uh, uh, space filling curves and so forth, become totally transformed by uh, the integration of water in the way I was actually building those drawings. Uh, and then uh, I started using different media. And uh, in uh, the late uh, 90s, I created this uh, uh, sand piece that was shown twice at SIGGRAPH uh, that actually draws on sand and uh, used sand as a very ephemeral medium because every drawing is only executed by erasing the one that was there before. And I got more and more interested in ephemerality after, for many years, I've been having been fighting to find stable inks and things that would not fade, uh, it became more and more interesting for me to do some things that would not last. Uh, that's another uh, sand piece, actually. It's the one where I worked with uh, Yanis that was shown a few years later at SIGGRAPH and had been solidified. And uh, so we could talk more about that, but there is not, not enough time. Uh, I've been also working with uh, water and light to have sound waves create waves on the water and create caustics uh, on the background like a canvas that is immersed in the water to, to create this kind of uh, very uh, fugitive image. And uh, lately, uh, having started to work with light, 
uh, and having met uh, somebody that is present downstairs and is one of our collaborators, having met uh, Jeremy uh, Sarche, uh, young student at uh, UCSD who was reading Conservatives, we started a project which is unfinished where we were going to build this huge dodecahedron where all the struts would be luminous and uh, the lights would be controlled so that we would have a light sculpture uh, representing uh, a transformation of one of the uh, platonic solids. Um, I have to go the other way. And uh, so first my work was very ordered. Uh, what you see on the, on the left is an example of that. Uh, it's uh, an augmentation of a piece by uh, uh, Max Bill that was created in 1938 and uh, was a work uh, on a, a polygonal spiral uh, involving a triangle, a square, a pentagon, an hexagon, which was a, a very perfect target for uh, algorithmic work. And uh, Max Bill has been doing these works by hand. He has created something like 15 variations and written an interesting paper inviting to create many more. And this is what I have done using computers. So this is one of them. Then on the right, you see another form, another spiral, which is more like the kind of work I do now, uh, which is involving a lot of uh, chance parameters and uh, where I try to control chance to have a pleasing result and uh, have surprises when I work. Uh, these are examples of the drawing I've been doing uh, lately. The two on uh, the left were done in 2008. And since then, uh, actually thanks to uh, Yanis and another friend from Santa Barbara, I got very much interested, like everybody else, in the work and the writing of John Cage. And uh, I have started a, a digital conversion of his idea of uh, rock drawings, where he was using chance to select rocks, place them on paper, surround them with a line of color, with a brush or a pencil. And I've been doing actually literally hundreds of them in a digital way. And on the right, we have an example of that. And uh, I still do. I still do that. And uh, actually here, uh, uh, the Rio MG Garden and uh, John Cage work and the sand piece and the rock drawings merge together in uh, this set of the four pictures. And uh, uh, emerges also in some recent drawings I have done like this one. Then I introduced time in my drawings. I have created several series which are entirely based on time. And the first interest of doing that was to actually create software uh, where time and uh, calendar time and hour and seconds and so forth would uh, make it so that a drawing could never be done twice. So that uh, I call it the wheel of time and uh, every rendering of whatever decision I could take will provide a different result. And I have explored that uh, for quite some time, created an interactive piece of software that uh, creates drawings like the one you see here. Oh, always going back and at the same time, I get also more and more interested in uh, Jean Cocteau and uh, in, uh, in text. And uh, Cocteau was saying that drawing is uh, a not a, a writing, or that uh, writing uh, was uh, not a drawing. And I started to include a text of different nature in drawings, or to create drawings using just letters, that is fonts. At that point, I was very close from working on, on books. And uh, this is an illustration of a book I have been working on which is a, a transformation of Italo Calvino's text, uh, Invisible Cities, uh, where uh, the cities are selected to create uh, a mesostic uh, of the title of Invisible Cities. And in each chapter of each city, uh, the name of the city is translated also in a mesostic. And uh, all the cities are illustrated like that. 
and it results in a very nice book that I have here in the hotel to bring them to Bibliothèque Nationale and Bibliothèque saint geneviève saint geneviève next week, but I have no picture of the book, unfortunately. Uh, then I happen also to be interested in physics. I have been for 10 years uh, artist in residence uh, at the uh, Cabinet Institute for Theoretical Physics in Santa Barbara. So I've been working with physicists, astronomers, and uh, I have been able to get all those notions into my work in many, many ways. Uh, the previous image was about galactic lensing. Here you have particle movements in uh, sand, which is uh, about uh, particular physics. Uh, a drawing made just with a pendulum working with uh, gravitation, a simple expression of that. And uh, here we get closer to uh, what you will see downstairs. On the right, left, you see a large sensibility that is on the balcony. And this sculpture is actually holding a few pendulums equipped with the marking points uh, that are used to create what I call uh, breeze drawings. The interest of, for doing that is that uh, the gesture of uh, the sensibility and the pendulum animated by the breeze over the paper creates a very lively line. And I have been for some time very impressed by Jean Cocteau saying that the drawing is beautiful if the lines are alive. And using computers, and also I have been trying to trick lines into being as alive as possible, uh, there is a limit to what I could do. And this uh, device that was invented from that sculpture is creating scene from close uh, very, very interesting lines and drawings. Uh, I can use a number of very, very simple tricks to actually uh, manipulate or the destiny of the drawing using papers and rocks. We are back to the old drawings, by the way. And uh, this is the kind of line that the system can produce. Uh, here we are getting closer and closer. And <laughs> And uh, this is a, a, a maquette that uh, we did last year uh, of Narcissus that you will see downstairs when the installation is over. You see the reflection of the sensibility. Here it's a picture, so it doesn't move. But the idea and the experiments that we did a year ago uh, was allowing the breeze, natural breeze, to actually sway uh, gently the, the sculpture and the uh, camera watching over the reflection is actually sending signals to software that creates sound. So this is what you will see. And then uh, about at the end, uh, there is a, a missing member of our collaboration who is uh, Jeremy Sarche. He's here in his tiny little studio in Santa Barbara, building uh, sensibilities that I will use when I return to create more breeze mornings. But he is the one who created uh, the sensibilities that you are seeing being assembled now. I'm done.